Hey there groovy dudes and dudes, this is Thomper be Thompin and in this video I'm going to give you a quick comparison of two pretty common air compressors for a DIYer or a traditional homeowner. Uh, I'm going to show you quickly the one gallon Senko which is very quiet and very light, very portable. And then we're also going to go over this eight gallon Husky which is a bit more powerful but a lot louder as well. Both of these are very affordable and pretty common homeowner air compressors. So quickly we're going to run through the specifications and the features for each of these and then I'm going to get into a little bit of testing and show you how these compare to each other. Obviously they don't directly compete with each other but they do compete price wise. There's only a $10 difference with the send code being $10 more. So we're going to run through some actual decibel readings through the app on the phone. I am going to see how much time it takes for them to reach their claimed max PSIs. I have some uh, light truck rated, uh, E-rated truck tires over here and they are currently set at 20 PSI. I'm going to fill each of the tanks up to their maximum and see how much a single tank can put into those tires PSI wise. We are going to then uh, do a little bit of cutting. I've got some metal rebar. Obviously you're not really using either of these machines to cut but uh, you can in a pinch should you need to. So we'll see how, see how they do with that. And then, uh, then we'll kind of run through some final thoughts and, and compare these, but really talk about uh, what, what kind of an air compressor is best for, for a homeowner or a DIYer and what's coming out on the market in the future that's pretty exciting. So let's jump right into the specifications. Okay, so we will run through some specs real quick and then dive straight into some decibel readings. So the price-wise, the Senko is $159 retail, whereas the Husky 8-gallon is $149 retail. I did purchase this one over the holidays for $99, bucks, which is uh, one of the major reasons why I bought it. The Senko, being a quiet air compressor, comes in at 68 claimed decibels, whereas the Husky comes in at 83 decibels. Now PSI is where these things differ quite a bit, with the Senko having a 135 max PSI rating and the Husky having a 150 max PSI rating. Husky comes in at one... I live under a uh, flight path. Husky comes in at 1.8 horsepower and the Senko comes in at 0.5 horsepower. So there's a major difference. But the biggest difference of all is probably the uh, air delivery standard cubic feet per minute. The Senko comes in at a pretty measly 0.7, whereas the Husky comes in at 3.7, both at 90 PSI. So you can obviously get a lot more work done with the Husky. You can use a proper nail gun. With the Senko, you might be able to get away with something like a little trim gun. Amperage is another big difference. Uh, the Senko comes in at 4 amps and the Husky at 12 amps. And then um, Husky weighs 60 pounds, but it has these nice little rubber wheels on it. Uh, both of these machines are oil free, of course. And the Senko has a one year manufacturer warranty, whereas the Husky has a two year limited warranty, whatever that means. So one more thing real quick, Husky is not a single hand quick coupler. You've got to use two hands. There's the Senko, quick coupler. That's a nice little feature, point Senko. Okay, and we're gonna kick off the decibel rating. And now for the Husky. All right, so next is going to be a quick timing of how long it takes each air compressor to filter their max capacity. 
both regulators are cranked all the way up. Here we go. I will uh, I'll pause and resume once she's full. Okay. So just about two minutes and 25 seconds for the Husky, not too bad. All right, and here is how long it takes the one gallon Senko to, to get to completely full with the regulator turned all the way up. Ready? I'll resume once she's full. And there you have it, one minute and 50 seconds to fill up for the Senko. Okay, so on to the tire inflation. These are E-rated tires, light truck tires. They have a maximum PSI of 80. So as anyone who's uh, tried to blow up tires like this before, it can take a heck of a long time to get up to 80 PSI, assuming you're sewing, towing something very, very heavy. These are currently at 20. It says 20.5. I took the Senko from when I just filled it up, and I'm gonna see how many PSI it puts in this tire. It drains real quick for tires. Might be fine for passenger tires, but if you have light truck tires, like on a pickup or a dually or something, it's gonna take a lot. And with these light truck tires, the higher you get in PSI, the less each tank actually fills it up. So that's just about depleted. It went from 20.5 to 26. So it would take a lot of fill-ups on this little Senko to get these tires back up to about 37, which is where I run them. Now onto the Husky. Okay, so I took the Husky. I'm on the other side of the truck. This tire is at 20 PSI. Let's double check, because it could have changed a little bit. 20.5 PSI. I took the Husky when it was full, brought it over here, plugged in the hose, We'll see how much PSI this puts in. Oh yeah. Oh, she's still chewing. You can tell the difference. Still going. Taking its sweet, sweet time. Still going. Probably can't hear it, but it's still dispensing air. Well, shoot, it's got more left in it, but I'm gonna check, cause that's 47. Okay, I'm gonna have to take that one down. I'm not gonna fill it up anymore, but this one still had plenty of air left to go. Well, no, I take that back, not plenty. It still had some air left to give. And it took, it took it all all the way to 47, so you know, a couple tanks that'll get you up to the 80 PSI if you are hauling really heavy. Okay, on to the cutting wheel. Okay, so once again, I got the Husky topped off, full tank, unplugged it. And then I uh, plugged in the hose and I hooked up the grinder with the cutting wheel. <clears throat> We're just gonna see how many cuts of this uh, standard size rebar this cutting wheel makes now Yes, I don't have a guard on here. Normally. I always use a guard But this is a hand-me-down tool from my father and it did not come with a guard. So I am gonna stay perpendicular Just in case this thing uh, fragments on me, but the uh, the max rpm on this cutting wheel is pretty high So we're just gonna see how many cuts this tank will do <laughs>
clean hook up here. Yeah, I got a clean hook up. Yeah, that's it. Wow. That was poultry. She's still showing 75 PSI. I don't know if that is legit or what. It's not enough to turn the wheel, that's it, okay. I thought it was gonna be way more than that. As you can see, barely made a dent in that rebar. I don't even know if it's worth trying with the Senko. Okay, it's the same situation. I got the Senko topped off. It's unplugged, plugged in the hose, got the cutting wheel. We'll see if this does anything at all. Well, there you go, folks. The Senko doesn't even have enough juice to run this thing for a second. So if you ever anticipate having to use a cutting wheel, even if it's in an emergency for a small thing, you need at least an eight gallon tank. So in conclusion, guys, there's a little quick uh, demo of each of these air compressors. I think that they each have their place, but I think there's much better ones out on the market. I purchased the Husky because it was on sale, $100. Also, I like the, uh, the horizontal hot dog shape and I, the way I have my garage set up, I can very easily store this thing in a very specific spot. Um, so a stand-up tank, although I would desire one, isn't really as conducive for me. Now, the, the plus side of the Senko and these other quiet one-gallon tanks is they're 26 pounds. They're incredibly light, they're incredibly compact, you can fit this in, in the back of a Miata if you had to, and you can take them wherever you need to go. Additionally, although the Husky isn't too loud, I wouldn't run this thing at 10 p.m. or 11 p.m. outside if I was working, working late on a project and I live in the suburbs. I like my neighbors and I want to keep it that way. Um, but this thing you can run at just about any time of night. Uh, so if you live in a townhome, or you live in a very crowded area, or you're concerned about neighbors, these quiet machines that they're coming out with are outstanding. So if I had more space, personally, Husky makes a 20 gallon compressor, it's $300 and it's silent. Uh, it's a vertical one, it comes with wheels, and it's silver in color. So it's on Home Depot's website, that's the one I would buy if I had the space for it. It's 20 gallons, so it can do a lot of work. I think it has a, um, I think it has a 4.0 air delivery uh, standard cubic feet per, or, yeah, standard cubic feet per minute rating, uh, 4.0. This is a 3.7. This is a 0.7. But I think that there are better air compressors out there. There's like the companies that are currently making affordable, competitive, quiet air compressors in the one gallon to 10 gallon range. Makita, California Air Tools, Husky, Stealth, Campbell Hossfeld. You go on Amazon and you got your you got your choice. So these are, this was $159. It's not really competitively priced anymore. You can get one with four to five times the capacity for an extra 20 to 50 bucks and it's still quiet or quieter what i'm most excited for is the ones that are battery powered dewalt and ryobi have a, a 20 volt uh well ryobi's on the 20 volt system dewalt is on the 60 volt max system but they're coming out with port with uh, portable air compressors so most people who are taking these things to a job site sure they're uh, they're using generators and stuff like that or they have outlets that they can attach to no problem but if you're building a cabin or if you're like a homesteader or something, having that take with you anywhere air compressor capability is pretty cool. So there you go. Thanks for watching.